like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, or in this case, the end of old Route 66, the Justice Brothers Racing Museum is a must-see for any motorsports enthusiast. The Justice Brothers have been racing for more than five decades, and their Duart California collection is a celebration of their success that is truly unique. When you walk through the front door of Justice Brothers, the first thing you see is our racing museum, and there's a whole selection of cars here from dirt cars, sport cars, midgets, old cars, Indy car, and then we have an airplane, aerobatic airplane hanging from the ceiling that a lot of people miss because they're so preoccupied with what's down on the floor. The Justice Brothers Racing Heritage covers virtually all forms of motorized competition. And the man currently at the wheel of this racing family is the son of one of the founders, Ed Justice Jr. The history of the Justice Brothers and the Justice Brothers Corporation Motorsports goes back to prior to World War II. My uh, one uncle, Zeke Justice, worked with Frank Curtis at Don Lee Cadillac and was actually Frank Curtis's first employee right after the war. Uh, my father also worked at Curtis Craft after the war, and they got into the oil business, ended up going to the south, was involved with NASCAR at the beginning of NASCAR's uh, roots, and we've been involved in virtually uh, every type of motorsport that you can think of around the world for over 50 years. Today, the company is well known as a manufacturer and distributor of quality car care products. Besides the fantastic museum, the headquarters includes a full manufacturing facility and warehouse, and a complete shop where you can almost always find an interesting restoration underway. Unlike many museums that chronicle only the best of bygone days, the Justice Brothers Museum is as up-to-date as the latest premier U.S. Open Wheel Oval race. Major highlights of the history of Justice Brothers and Motorsports would be my uncle building the Ross Page Indy car with Frank Curtis, which was the first Indy car built by Frank Curtis. Uh, they won the Indy 500 in 1950 with Johnny Parsons uh, and uh, also got second place in 1952 with Jim Rathman. Uh, my uncle also built a car for uh, Bob Flock that uh, won the Little 500. And then this last year, we had a car in the middle of the front row at the Indy 500 with Greg Ray. And he was the second fastest qualifier for this year's race. There are so many great cars to see here, and we couldn't possibly see them all up close. But Ed is fond of a few that truly define specific eras in racing history. The Curtis Midget built after the war, uh, the famous Curtis Midget after the war, the 40s model, is a tube frame car. Uh, prior to World War II, they were channel frame, and my uncle Zeke uh, suggested to Frank to make a tube frame car, and the cars became very popular. The Curtis Midgets ran competitively on up into the 70s in competitive racing, and there's still many of them around today. They're considered to be a little jewel of dirt track racing. The next car is a 1933 sprint car or championship dirt car. This car could have run at Indianapolis, although it didn't. It was built completely by uh, one fellow, Harry Lewis, in a garage in San Antonio, Texas, for a fellow by the name of T. Noah Smith. Uh, T. Noah entered the car in one race down in Mexico, and the car ran in the race, averaged over 100 miles an hour. It's uh, you know, a great example of that 30s era dirt car. Very stiff suspension, and it's got a rotary valve Chevy motor in it. It was a patented design on a 28 Chevy block. The GT40, when you come in the lobby on your left hand side, is one of the eye catchers for a lot of people when they come in. I know it is for me because it's my era as a young uh, boy. Ran in the, in the early mid-60s actually, mid-60s. This car is painted like the 1969 winner at Le Mans. Uh, that was driven by Jackie Eakes, and I think Jackie Oliver was the other driver. It's actually a homologated streetcar, serial number 1028, owned by the Schroeder family and on loan to us here. Everyone at Justice Brothers is wild about wheels, so it's hard to tell just where the museum ends and the corporate office begins, but it's a tradition that they all enjoy. Justice Brothers is a second generation business, and my family, uh, you know, started the business and of course my dad is very happy that we're going on and continue on the tradition and I'm happy to be part of the tradition. Well in the short time we've had to share this story with you we can only hope that we did it justice.